Hi, I'm Ollie. Hi, I'm Rob. And this is a comic strip AP of Dungeon World, featuring the adventures for one last time of Alford Soultaker. Okay, so the last time we saw Alford, he had fled Frostbreach, which is currently under attack by Inquisitory Breen and his soldiers that he's brought with him. Alford and Helder have fled into the forest and are heading south along the trail, and they are doing so with the aid of some horses and a cart, which they've stolen from some of their ex-colleagues, who they left fighting an owlbear. The war in Frostbreach is far behind us. We drag ourselves onwards, south, towards warmer climes. Behind us a town full of dead criminals, their corpses picked over by Inquisitor Oprian and his troops. No doubt he's realised by now that we've got away, and I have no doubt he'll be coming for us. Ahead, only ice and snow as far as the eye can see. But beyond it, somewhere, home. My resolve stiffens whenever I think of home. I will let no man, woman, or thing stop me. Worm blight grows heavier by the day, its infernal whisperings always at the edge of my consciousness. Only at night when I am asleep does it yet hold sway over me. My name is Alford Soultaker, but I have lived more lives than just my own. So you can feel that you're sleeping. You've had so many of these repeated dreams since Wormblight came into your possession that they've become part of your psyche now. So back into the vision when you first took Wormblight up and you had the vision of the assassin yeah. taking on the bandit camp. You are once more that assassin stalking. Or where is the assassin stalking right now? What's, what's she up to? She is also in a wood, but this wood couldn't be more different. This wood is black with ash and the stumps of burnt trees. There's been some sort of catastrophic fiery event here there's no life it's silent and all around her thick clumps of dirt and ash fall softly from the sky nice you're moving through this burning forest you know you're being surrounded by barbarian forces and you know they're coming for you stalking through the billowing smoke towards you i look all around me do i get a sense of being hemmed in is there no escape is this a last stand yes it is you're not getting out of this without a fight if I get caught and they come from all angles, they're just going to swamp me. So I have to move myself within this encroaching circle. I'm going to get as silently as I can to the edge that appears to be the least populated with barbarians and thugs. There must be some sort of small crevasse, maybe a fallen log, that I can secrete myself in and ready myself. I'm going to ask you to roll a defy danger with intelligent to the assassin, and that is going to be plus one. Ten. That's a ten. Okay, cool. You swoop forward and you manage to slide under a fallen tree. This is kind of smouldering ash and tree. Yeah. Just as they come into the clearing, what do you do? I grip Wormblight tight up against my shoulder and I hold my breath. I've met these guys before and as, as dumb as they look and as big as they are, they're not stupid. They've got keen eyes and even more keen ears. I'm going to try and take one out and run. And what these guys also are is not subtle. They've burnt down this entire forest to find you. Okay. Make me a Defy Danger Strength. Uh, and Strength is not your forte, so that's going to be minus one. Okay. Six. Okay. What was your plan as the, the guy is nearest to you? I've noticed they tend to wear shoulder armour, greaves, helmets, but they're typical barbarians tending to leave bare, bronzed chests. I was going to try and swing round and give him a gut shot. Pivot around him almost balletic and just make a sprint behind him in the hope there's not someone directly behind him that I also have to barrel through. I'm an assassin, not a fighter. You don't get caught out by this first guy. You slice into him exactly as you planned. And unfortunately, there is that second guy behind him, but you don't get taken out by him either. You're just carried through by momentum, slash straight across his throat, tearing it out. It's not even the third or the fourth guy that gets you. But the fifth and the sixth, you feel that of an arrow landing in your back and another one in your gut and you're able to stagger forward a few more steps before this hulking giant of a man, his hair in top knotted braids, covered from head to toe in red tattoos, almost nude, except for a bare skin across his groin. I drop to one knee. Comes forward towards you, looks down at you smirking, looks at Wormblight, and he takes it. I just feel so weak. And we fade, and you can feel all of the surroundings changing around you. You can feel your face changing and you can feel your personality changing because you feel this barbarian lord kind of wash over you. And you're years later, 
you're in his castle. When you change, there is a definite sort of shimmery feeling. Sure. And the castle. Well, describe your castle. What does it look like? It is basic. It's not really a castle designed to li be lived in. Certainly not a castle to be lived in by a king or a prince. This is just spoils of war. We're, we're just spending a short amount of time here crowing over our recent victory, not because we desired the castle. We're going to drink their wine, we're going to eat what food they've got left, and we're going to leave. They, however, have not taken this very well. You have angered the kingdom of Renthausen, and they are a kingdom of powerful magics, and you can hear these the kind of the whistling of fireballs flying across the sky and smashing into your castle. And you're there in your throne room, worm blade at your side, cup of wine there. What are you doing? Brooding with an increasing sense of rage. All I'm getting from my chieftains are reports of the mud itself writhing up and battering at the doors, of rains of fire burning down our men and our weapons. It makes no sense. I don't understand it. It's time to take this in hand. I heave my bulk up from my throne and I pick up Worm Blight, look to my side where my battle axe is, pick that up too. Rally the men. We are taking this to the enemy. Nice. And I stride out. You stride out, and as you stride out, you see just Apocalypse. The whole of the castle is on fire, but seemingly at the same time, there's bits of it which are just covered in frost, walls that are melting and cracked. Your men are running, screaming everywhere. And stalking towards you through the flame, uncaring, is this, this person. You can't tell if it's a man or a woman or something else entirely. Their face is covered in this kind of this large blue silk robe, and their hands are raised above them. One with fire, one with ice spinning all around it. And they throw their hands back, gathering a fireball up. I just turn briefly to one side and spit. <laughs> and then I unclip my bare skin and let it drop off my humongously broad shoulders, square them, and with a blood-curdling yell, I just run straight into the moor of magical oblivion. As you charge forward and you feel these flames come towards you and you feel them envelop you, you feel the shimmer come over you again and you feel your face change, and you feel your whole body change, become lighter and slightly shorter. You feel your personality change, you feel wisdom coming into your mind where previously there was only rage. And you're now the wizard that you were just fighting. Years later, worm like next to you, and there's this huge pain in your gut. I find myself already holding my stomach, and I glance down at my open palm. Now why did you, as a mage, desire worm blight so greatly when it is such a physical force? Still looking at my own blood, I murmur, Worm Blight is not a weapon of force. You don't even know its capabilities. Only I could have unlocked its power, its true power. If only I'd had more time. Time, unfortunately, is what you don't have. Not anymore. And King and Morin steps forward, takes the sword, holds it aloft. I hiss through bloodied teeth. You fool. This will bring you nothing you desire. It will be your end. And as the king laughs, we shimmer again. The world around you changes. Here, you just feel the world change. And there's something different when you become the king. There's something deeply wrong. But you don't have too much time to think about this, because Alford Soultaker has his sword in your gut. I want to whisper, but it won't come out. And I die. You wake up. Entirely, 100% Alford again. You're in the back of the cart. The light snow falling on your face. You hear Helder say, I think we've been tracked. Okay. Up. Now. Okay, Helder. Okay. Ugh. And I just take the time just to run my hand firmly up and down my own face. It's half to wake me up. It's half just to check that I feel like I'm still me. It does feel like you, and what it also shows is quite how much of a toll the war and frost breaches take on your skin. is buff, your skin is scarred. My beard is unkempt, and I am dirty, and I smell. Worse than you did just normally going on a frost beach, because you've been riding through the, the tundra for the last couple of days now. We're all exhausted. You are, and if you don't find some shelter fairly soon, then it might not matter. I sit bolt upright, throwing off the thick wolf pelts that we've been using as blankets, and I cast around the bleak tundra to see what it is that may have given Elder a clue that we're being tracked. Okay, that sounds like a discern realities to me, with wisdom. With wisdom, that's a plus one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 11. 11, okay, so you get to ask me, I believe, three questions from the list. What here is not what it appears to be? When the Penal Legion, which made up the population of Frost Breach, came from the south to the north, they would have blazed some trails. You've definitely not been following those, because that's where people are going to be looking for you, that's how you're going to get yourself caught. Presumably that's the route that O'Brien took when he came north to Frost Breach. 
so you're not getting that way because you know he knows that way you know governor alderman knows that way yeah you are working your way through some of the sparser areas of the forest enough to give you cover but also enough for the horses to actually make their way through however what helder's pointing out in front of you now is that the trees have been cleared on this way ahead that's unexpected not too many of them but there is an area in front of you where clearly some ground has been cleared how wide is it is it too wide to go around no, it's not too wide to go around. If you go off this path, you are going to be going into deeper forest. I think it's time that I asked what is about to happen. You are about to get ambushed. Now that you've noticed this trap up in front of you, you start looking around, you start scanning the, the tree line, and you can see people in camouflage moving along the tree line on the inside. I, I assume it's pretty evident that we've been seen. Yeah, 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 they definitely know you're here. You don't know if they know that you've seen them. So Helder is reaching down for her bow. Okay, I vault off the side of the cart. Whoa, slow down. We're slipping a wheel. Nice. And I hope Helder's going to go with the ruse. And I jump down with a short bow casually held in one hand. And, of course, worm blight sheathed over my shoulder. And I pretend to examine what could be a damaged axle or a, a spurred cart wheel. You vault off the cart and start pretending that you're trying to fix the wheel. So I'm going to ask you to roll a, a Defy Danger with Charisma, then. Eight. It's an eight. It's okay. an eight. And I, okay, and I try and facilitate this ruse by going, hey, get down here and look at this. I'm not sure if I can fix this on my own. Okay, you do fool them. As much as I'm bending down trying to mock attending the cart, I'm casting my eyes sidelong around me, trying to keep track of those who I know are watching. Does Helda join me? She, what she does is she pulls the cart to a stop and she notches an arrow in her bow, but she kind of keeps it below the walls of the cart so that no one else can see it. The downside is these people don't really care that you've shot a wheel, so they stop. They don't immediately go in for an attack. Oh, we're not going to wait for them. <laughs> okay, they're sort of confused and you do get that chance. As, as far as I see it, they're ready to attack a cart in a certain place. If we've moved even 20 yards away from they want us, they need to subtly shift their positions. The minute one of them seems to step out from behind a tree or elevate slightly and try and creep along to another snowdrift, that's when I draw back my bow and let loose. Nice. Okay, that is going to be a volley. Do you want to read out the text of the volley? When you take aim and shoot at an enemy at range, roll plus dex. On a 10 plus, you have a clear shot to deal your damage. On a 7 to 9, choose one. You have to move to get the shot, placing you in danger of the GM's choice. Or, you have to take what you can get, minus 1d6 damage. Or, you have to take several shots, reducing your ammo by 1. Let's make my roll. 5. That's a 5. Okay. That's a 5. I'm hopeful that Helder will follow my lead, though. Yeah, yeah, both of you do. You're professionals, you're good at this, you know what you're doing. So, a few of your arrows do find a home. And you can hear people screaming as you let off the first, the second, the third... And then you're rushed on all sides. And rangers come forward out of the, the brush and the trees towards you with wolves at their sides and camouflaged. You recognise them as the guards from Frostbreach. And Helder is being pulled off the cart and held at arrow point. You're being held at arrow point. Put up a struggle before that happens, but I'm mad. You struggle and one of the guards smacks you straight in the face. And you can, you, you can feel that kind of crunch and you feel the blood dripping down. You can kind of taste it. You can taste your own blood. Yeah, it's happened so many times. And the guard smiles at you and says, I've been waiting to do that for a good long while. And then you hear from the forest, they say, leave him be, Lickard. We need him. And Governor Alderman steps out of the forest towards you, looking somewhat the worse for wear. And for the first time in quite some time, in his full battle regalia, what do you do? I start to cast around. My tactician's mind slips into gear to try and tot up numbers, tot up positions, tot up the weapons that are being held, the armor that's being used, elevation, cover. I'm just trying to map what's happening around me in case I need to make a break for it. I'm also at that point going to cash in my final discern realities question, which of course is what here is useful or valuable to me. Okay, what's here is useful or valuable to you right now is that Alderman doesn't seem to be heading forward aggressively. I mean, yes, you have admittedly just have your nose broken, but that motherfucker never liked you anyway. He didn't. He's not heading towards you with triumph. He's not angry, given that the last time you saw him, I believe you headbutted him into unconsciousness. I did. And actually, his eye is turbulent swollen. He looks relieved when he sees you, and that's something you can play on. 
I am short compared to him, but I puff my chest out and stand tall. I square up to him. The last time he stood in front of me like this is when I was rebranded Soul Taker. Yes. Last time, I hung my head. This time, I'm standing square. I've got nothing left to lose. Alford, I know you well enough to know you're thinking of making a run for it. You'll probably kill several of my men. We'll kill you. We'll kill your friend, Game Thief, over there. I'd rather that didn't happen. So let's not do this. Let's not me have to run you through and take that thing. He's standing a few feet back, by the way, and he's looking down at Wormblight. With it, I give him a, a long, appraising stare. My eyes pinch a little bit as I look at him. And then I curtly nod. All right, then. So let me go. I shan't be letting you go. Take the sword from him. I joke back, and I, I just snarl. Leave the sword. I'll listen. I won't kill all your men. And you hear Rickard chuckle over your shoulder. I'd like to see you fucking try, you scum. I maintain perfect eye contact with Alderman, and I add... But I will kill him. Alderman just kind of sighs, eyeballs, and gestures for you to follow him. I shrug off, people holding me, and then pace through the snow behind him. The only person I take a glance at is Helda. She looks back at you. You know how someone can say with their eyes, for fuck's sake. And Alderman, he's not even looking back at you, uh, which strikes you as odd. He knows you're very dangerous. Yes. He knows you're more than dangerous. You can see he's... He's limping, he's kind of holding at his side, and as you look down at his side, you can see there is some dark blood, some dried blood. Catch up a little bit, clear my throat. <clears throat> so, Alderman, now that we're friends... Is that what we are? What's the matter with your leg? I took an arrow to the knee, I was stabbed in my side. I have had an extraordinarily suboptimal day. Mm, tough. And here's the thing, Alford Soultaker. It may not have been you that did it, but it might as well have been. Now, tell me, why would an Inquisitor bring an army to destroy my camp, my life's work? They're here for you. He doesn't strike me as the sort of person who's here just to literally have the answer to that question and then call it quits. So if you want to roll to some realities. Okay, well, he's transparent to me like a sheet of ice. I got 12. Very nice. He's talking to you now like a teacher would talk to... Uh, a thuggish child who was stuck with something and he's asking where it is. He knows very well where it is. He, he knows the answer to this. He just wants to hear you say it. I look at him. He looks at me. We almost seem to have an understanding. So I play his game and I just say, All right. We killed the king. A long time ago now. No. Apparently no you didn't. My eyes narrow again. What do you mean, Alderman? Obreen likes to talk. And after he'd stabbed me, and after his man had shot me in my leg, just before he planned to kill me, he told me exactly what's happening. He's what's known, I believe, as a monologuer. The man that you killed, the thing that you killed, was not the king. They are all hairless and muscled and gorgeous. I am sweating and it's nothing to do with the forest fire. <laughs> I'm not frightened of death. Death's frightened of me. <laughs> Which is just as well. <laughs> Through wide eyes, I take in the handsome yet craggy features of one of my trusted <laughs> lieutenants. Let's actually make a fucking roll in the whole of this session. With Alfred? <laughs> I know, right? Not just me bullshit making up stats and hoping you fail so I can cut to the next stream sequence. <laughs> but if the man I killed wasn't the king, who was it? My sorry tale concludes in a few days' time. Hi, this is Jason from the Gauntlet Gaming Community. If you enjoyed this episode of Comic Strip AP, please consider supporting the Gauntlet on Patreon. Our page can be found at patreon.com forward slash gauntlet.